Hello and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am your host, Angel Ferguson, and it is always a pleasure to spend time with you in the Word of God, sharing in the scriptures as the Holy Spirit allows us to, and just to encourage your hearts. We love to stay connected with you, our listening as well as our reading audience. And there are countless ways in which you can connect with us via our website, www.afergusonswrp.simplesite.com. Via the website, you have the opportunity to check out our publishing division, Hope and Truth Magazine, Motivation That Inspires Bookstore, as well as our mentoring and ministry division. Other ways in which you can connect with us is via social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, iTunes, our YouTube channel, Google, as well as iHeartRadio. Just check out The Balance of Life. And if you would like to email us, our email address is afergusonwrp at yahoo.com. Subject matter could be advertising, Hope and Truth magazine. We welcome your comments if there is a certain area in which you would like us to share. Or for your announcements, for your upcoming events, church organizations, drop us a line and we will advertise that information for you. We recently aired a live podcast and just sharing some words of encouragement from the book of Isaiah and we'd like to continue those words of encouragement. I tell you that the more you read and meditate and and the Holy Spirit gives a revelation of the word, the sweeter it becomes. And so there is never a moment where we should be in a scramble on what we can share with you because the word of God is is just really, really good. And I'm super excited about sharing the word of God with you. And so we are, we started over in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, and and we're going to pick up from there and, and just continue to encourage your hearts and your souls. And we pray that Something that we share with you will allow you to examine your relationship with Christ. If you do not have a relationship with him, I I certainly encourage you to gain a relationship with him. Learn about him. And that's our job here is, is we are to teach you and share with you just who he is who we have found him to be in our lives and that you will have your own experiences with him, that you will find him to be your Lord and your savior, your guide and your deliverer, truly a provider and a place in which we can hide. He is truly a shepherd. And so I was looking over and just meditating over the word in this 19th verse, and we are in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, in the 19th verse. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Behold, I will do a new thing. And as I was thinking on that scripture, I I went over to 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. And the 17th verse, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. 
old things are passed away, behold, all things are become anew. In order for anything new to transpire in our lives, old things must pass away. We must submit ourselves under the authority and the guidance of our Lord and Savior and the Holy Spirit. We must have a desire to die to this flesh and the things that we did in our former lives. But truly, Isaiah 43 and 19 says, Behold, I will do a new thing. And I don't know about you. But in my life before I came into the knowledge of Christ, before I... I pursued that desire to have the fullness of God operating in my life. My way led me in circles. My way led me down some paths and some roads that were of no benefit. They led me down a road of heartache and anger and anguish, lack of peace, no joy, no happiness. No matter what I did, it did not amount to anything. But now that I am experiencing the fullness of God in my life and, and I am spending time with him in the word and the more I, I learn about him and read about him, the more time that I spend with him in prayer and in meditation, the more I desire the more I thirst after him, the more I hunger my knowledge to learn of my Lord and Savior, of God the Father, to know the Holy Spirit, to follow the will of the Father, becomes more intense. And so this word, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? You will know this new thing. And, and the, the new thing is a true deliverance in your life, a true change in your life. It's, it's, nothing, it's nothing that you've never experienced before when you experience a true deliverance. When that desire resurfaces and your first thought process is to bind the hand of the enemy and to rebuke it and to stand on the word of God, that's new. When unpleasant thoughts or, or thoughts of gossip enter and into your mind, and, and I can say for me that I quickly say, and that's none of my business, I, I, I think on the word of God rather than entertaining thoughts that are not pleasing unto him. And so as we encourage you, we are encouraging ourselves. That in hopes one day, as you grow closer to Christ, that you too will have a desire to become a, an effective witness, as we mentioned on, on a previous podcast, that you become an effective witness. Because that is our obligation. And I don't know about you, but I enjoy sharing and talking about the goodness of the Lord. And I often think back of just where he has brought me from. And it makes me so appreciative of how he provides for me. 
how he takes care of me when there are times when I cannot gather a thought of how it's going to be he takes care of me in such a way that I could never take care of myself you see we we do a half job and and we think that we take very good care of ourselves but have you ever been in the position to allow the father to take care of you Have you ever been in the position where he he supplies the natural needs, but he is also ministering unto your soul? You see, when we we look at supplying the needs, I, I also look at the spiritual aspects of those needs. I have a need for deliverance in my life, for spiritual healing. I have a need to draw closer to him and nothing that I can do in the natural can give me what my soul desires. Behold, I will do a new thing. Because he says in his word, behold, I will do a new thing. I have an expectation to look and to receive that new thing that he's going to do in my life and in my family's life for generations to come I have the expectation that I want to know what he says will you not know it will you not recognize when I do this new thing if you abide in me and my words abide in you You can ask what you will and it shall be given unto you. But we must abide in him in order to know this new thing. If I'm not abiding in him, I'll miss it. And I can't afford to miss the hand of God in my life. I can't afford to miss it. I don't know where you are in your life, but I tell you, you can't afford to miss the hand of God. You can't afford to miss his deliverance, his divine protection. You can't afford to waste another moment on the carnal things of this world. I encourage you to get into his presence. Get into your prayer closet, steal away, and lay before the Father, and allow him to minister unto your spirit, so that you may know what is the length and the depth and the height and the weight of his love, so that you may experience the fullness of God in your life but we must get in the right place in him because we can't afford to miss it i can't afford to let the cares of the world cause me to miss the hand of god i can't afford to be in a place that that i miss his presence that i'm not in the will of god He says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? The word of God is living. And if you have accepted him as your Lord and Savior, the word of God is living in you. You have to nurture that word. There is a hunger, I pray, that will hit your spirit. A thirst that will 
that will hit you, that you will thirst after the knowledge of Christ, that you will hunger to know more about him, that you will find yourself just in the word of God and that it, it, it is food unto your soul. The word of God is nourishment. It needs to be nourished. And how do you nourish that what's in you? Through getting an understanding. Not our understanding, but getting an understanding of the word of God. Through Christ. We have to understand just how powerful this word is. Don't take it for granted. I don't want you to miss the deliverance that God is, is going to send forth through not just your life, but through your household. I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to miss your healing. It must start in your spirit. The healing that you are seeking God for and the deliverance, it is in your spirit. As you begin to submit and accept the will of God, it is in your spirit. It must start in your spirit. The call to come forth and to get closer to him and the call of that promotion that you are seeking, it starts in your spirit. It's nothing that starts in the flesh. It is in the spirit. Behold, I will do a new thing. It starts in the spirit and then it manifests in the natural. We keep waiting for things to happen. And we keep saying, I don't see it. But he's saying, will you not know it? Will you not see it? But if you were abiding in me, you would know. We thank you for joining the balance of life. As it is our desire to just share with you the word of God and and I have to tell you that I'm so excited so excited about this word of God as as it is alive it is like the words are leaping off the pages and 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 my soul is just rejoicing and and it is the more that I read and the more that I meditate on the word of God the more that I am drawn back to it. It is how I start and end my day. I start my day in the Word of God. I end my day in the Word of God. It is alive and it is well in my spirit. And so as we are taking a look at this 43rd chapter of Isaiah, we shared with you earlier the mission of, of God's servant and some other things. And we just like to continue to share the word of God. Beginning at the first verse, it says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia 
and Sibia for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled, who among them can declare this, and show us formal things. Let them bring forth their witnesses, that they may be justified, or let them hear and say, it is truth. As you become a, a witness, be a witness of truth. Be a witness of the things that you have experienced of Christ. The deliverance that he has done in your life. What you have witnessed. What you have experienced. It is okay to share and say, I saw this. But when you can tell and share with someone, I know without a shadow of a doubt that he is a deliverer because he delivered me from this or that or, or that he was a healer, that, that I was sick in my body and I cried unto the Lord and he heard me. And so as we come to build you up, your confidence in Christ, that you too will find yourself to be an effectual witness. And not just to those who you are familiar with. But to those who God would allow to come into your past and, and, and into your path and he will open up the doors that you will have an opportunity to share of his goodness to demonstrate the fruits of the spirit I tell you that when you decide to become a a true servant of God I'm, I'm not talking about sometime I'm not talking about just on Sunday or, or when you are around other Christians, but daily, even when you are alone by yourself, when you decide to dedicate your life to Christ and you get real with where you are with him and you come to the reality that you cannot fix you, you cannot deliver you, but he can. you'll get to a point in your life that you will pursue peace with all men. That the things you might want to say, because the flesh, we, we yet live in the flesh. No man is perfect and we never want to give the persona that, that we are perfect because no man is perfect. We all have sinned and have come short. And as long as we live, we will make mistakes. But it's not that we try and that we pursue to make the mistakes. Our desire is to walk and to live in the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5 and 22 provides us with the fruit of the Spirit. And that is what we desire. That is what we aim for. Behold, I will do a new thing. That new thing in you is, is your mindset will change. 
you will begin to to take on a whole new thought process of, of, of what happens with your body because you are housing the word of God the word of God is living it in you when you accept it Jesus as your Lord and Savior you accepted the word in the beginning was the word the word was with God the word was God and God sent the word in the form in the fleshly form of Jesus and when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior you accepted the word to abide in you behold I will do a new thing will you not know it says the word of God will you not recognize that new thing everything about you will begin to change as you begin to grow closer to him as you begin to seek his face and grow into spiritual maturity you will begin to experience new levels new depths in him a new thing your conversations will change your thought process will change you will desire a real change not the temporary change that we can do on ourselves I'm, I'm not talking about uh, uh, you know I need a new attitude so I'm going to change my hair or I'm, I'm going to update my wardrobe I'm not talking about that kind of change talking about a change where you're living you're living for him you're pursuing the things of Christ The word of God says, and all of I get in, get in understanding. How am I to get an understanding? By getting in the word of God. And, and, and I encourage you to pray for an understanding, for knowledge and for revelation. But we cannot... Get a full revelation of that word if we're not fully committed unto him. If we're not committed from our heart, we won't understand the word of God. It will become and remain a mystery. And there is a key to unlocking that mystery, but we have to be a willing vessel. unto the will of God it's not my will but it's God's will be done it's not my way but it's his way there is nothing I can do without him the more I try to figure it out and, and, and connect the dots myself it just doesn't seem to connect so I've come to the reality of this it's his way just like he said in his word my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts that is a reality that I have faced. I have accepted the fact that he has all things under his control. I 
had my hands in the mix and, and, and it just did not come as I had planned it to come. But I know the more I remove and, and take my hands off of of the plans that he has for me that that if I would just allow him to take control and and as I follow his directions and his path, not mine, but as I follow his directions. Where he says, behold, I will do a, a, a new thing. And will ye not know it? I know that new thing shall come to pass. I have to take my hands off of it. I have to let him do what it is that he does best. He is the living word. The heavens and the earth were created in form because the word spoke it. And it was so. And that same word that created the heavens and the earth and the different bodies of water and the fowls of the air and, and every living creature, creature, every living creature, he spoke it and it was so. The word spoke it and it was so. And that same word abides in me and I abide in that word. The same word, it was spoken and it was so. And that same word in the beginning abides in me. It abides in you. And so we encourage you. Get into the will of God. Seek him with your whole heart. Really get into a place to seek him. In your time of reading, I encourage you to go over to the book of Isaiah. In the 43rd chapter as well as 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter and the 17th verse. He says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Old things are passed away. And have an ex expectation of that new thing. He says, Will you not know it? I tell you that when you become real with who you are in Christ, yes, you will. We love you here at The Balance of Life, and we thank you for tuning into our station, Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson here on Spiker.com, as well as iHeartRadio. We'd love to hear from you. Our email address is aFergusonWRP at Yahoo.com. Stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way. Have a blessed afternoon.